Hey there, this is Dr. Falcon, and today I'm going to use and review the Inspector Food Test Kit, which is made by Halo Industry. Uh, you can find this product at haloindustry.com as well as through other online vendors. Uh, basically, the reason I'm going to use it today is I received a notification from Costco, where we buy a lot of our food, that um, peanut butter that has been made for the Kirkland brand, that's the Costco house brand, may have been contaminated with salmonella. And unfortunately, I have a giant jar of it in my hand and uh, we've been eating it here in the house and my fiance has actually been sick and we wonder if it is related to the peanut butter. So right away, one of the things that's uh, repeated and printed very uh, frequently on the product packaging for the inspector is that it's not intended for internal human testing. I don't know what that means exactly. I know that um, most of the time when you test for E. coli or salmonella in a human being, you take their fecal matter and you test, you test that in a solution. That's obviously not what we're doing today, thank goodness, uh, because we're in my kitchen and I don't want to poop in my kitchen. So uh, again, these are supposed to be preliminary results. The product documentation says over and over again, uh, make sure that you take it to a lab if you feel like something really is. Um, contaminated with salmonella or E. coli. So right away, just want to get in the contents of the kit. You get four uh, test kits with, with your purchase, two for salmonella and two for E. coli. Right off the bat, I really wish that they had had just a uh, salmonella one because I don't really care about E. coli, but they might be useful in the future. Uh, regardless of type, there is an expiration date for the medium. It's less than a year, so it's like less than six months from now, it expires. I don't know when these are made up. I don't know if six months is a typical expiration date or if these have been sitting on a shelf for a while. So that's something else I would have liked to know, uh, you know, if I'm getting my money's worth here. So we're gonna use a salmonella, salmonella kit today. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these other things off to the side. And the instructions are pretty straightforward. The instructions are printed on the inside of the package here. And what you do is you have to make a solution. Uh, the, the instructions recommend, you know, if you're testing a piece of fruit, for example, that you, uh, you wash the fruit in water and then you retain that water and that solution is used to test for E. coli or salmonella. Now with peanut butter, that seems a little bit different because obviously you can't wash peanut butter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a fair amount in this Pyrex measuring glass. And then I'm going to add uh, water to the glass and stir it up and make a solution. Now, I'm not really sure what the sensitivity is, the parts per million that it can detect. So I'm just going to stir it up. I'm going to add a little bit more water. So I have to, according to the directions, I have to collect um, a full fluid ounce of this stuff and then uh, add a buffer solution which is provided. They include the buffer fuel. Alright, so for the purpose of this test we're going to assume that one ounce of liquid is two tablespoons. If you're watching this in a uh, country where you use a metric system, I think that's 1.2 gigaliters. I don't really know. Um, all right, so here we go. I'm going to get two tablespoons of this solution and put it into the plastic bag. And I'm going to hope that the plastic bag does not leak. And a little bit extra. All right, so I'm going to set this aside. And the next thing you have to do is drop three drops of the buffer solution into the bag. So now I'm in this interesting position where I've got a bag full of nasty, potentially salmonella encrusted or infested water. There we go. And now I have to open this with two hands. Probably should have done that earlier. All right, so three drops. Three drops, drop in one, two, three. 
All right, three drops of buffer solution. The next thing I have to do is um, seal the bag, shake it for about five seconds, and then let it stand for three or four minutes. Um, I'm going to fold the bag over twice, just in case it's not fully sealed. Thousand two, one thousand three, one thousand four, one thousand five. All right, now I'm gonna let it sit for three to five minutes, and then we're gonna come back and finish processing the sample. All right, so we've let um, five minutes go by, and the bag, this is um, the solution is sort of evened out, so it's mostly liquid at the top here. And now we're on the second phase of the test, so I'm going to open the Salmonella test kit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the bag and I'm going to hold the test strip in the solution for 10 seconds. And apparently there's a pad in here. Uh, I don't want to touch it. Okay. Oh, there it is. So there's a desk end that came out, which I will save for later use. And there's a little tiny strip in here. I'm hoping there's a pad at the end of it. Oh, fuck this packaging. All right. Uh, all right, so I grabbed it in the middle because I was going to grab the top part and that's actually the pad. And I don't know if I should not touch the pad. I'm guessing that I shouldn't. So I'm going to touch the part that says melanoma or salmonella. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to open the bag here. And we've got a 10 second count inside the solution. So here we go. Oh man, that's nasty because I'm going to have to put my hand in the salmonella bag. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Not really keen on doing that. So I'm going to tilt the bag. Ah, oh, fuck it. It's actually really hard to put the strip inside the bag. This is really bad product design. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm going to extract the tab and now I'm supposed to leave it for 20 minutes. And I'm going to dump this in the sink and wash my hands immediately because now I'm freaking out. And we'll see you in 20 minutes. Hey there, this is Dr. Falcon. We're back. Um, 20 minutes has transpired. And it's a pretty interesting result. So the directions say that a bluish tint on the pad means that it's positive for salmonella. And then if there's no change on the pad color, then it's negative. Now what's interesting here is that the instructions also say that a green tint is uh, to be expected and does not indicate a positive result. So depending on how uh, blue-green colorblind you are, this might mean that you're going to die soon or you're totally fine. Um, now one thing that leads me to believe that this is a negative result and that this is actually a green color is that this is blue. Um, and since I'm involved in the usability and user experience industry, I would like to hope that this is the type of blue or the tone of blue or hue or whatever, that this blue is what it's supposed to look like when you have positive results. Um, that being said, because I'm in the usability industry, I know that nobody else thinks that way and it's quite possible this was the cheapest blue that they could find you know, to use or there's some um, totally unrelated reason they chose this blue and that it has nothing to do with matching this kind of greenish blue. Um, so I don't know what to say. I, Costco is saying that you know we can bring our peanut butter back and get a full refund, 
but I'd really like to know if our peanut butter was contaminated or not. Um, I don't think that that's blue to my eyes. Uh, to me that looks green, especially in, in comparison to the blue strip. But again, I don't know, because um, it kind of looks blue. If I cover this up, then it looks more blue to my eye. And if I take that away, it looks more green. And that's just how we perceive color. So overall, I'm not particularly happy with the Halo Industry test kit. I feel like the bag is a major uh, pain in the ass to use. And even if the kit costs 10 cents or 20 cents more to put some plastic vials in there, that would have been um, an easier thing to do. Um, I do have test tubes in the house that we use for ticks and um, Lyme disease. And maybe I should have used that, but I really wanted to follow the directions, so I did. And uh, I just I felt that it was a little too sloppy and discombobulated. Uh, and there's definitely room for improvement there. I think that they would have um, done themselves a service by using a color on the tab that would have matched what the expected result was, and maybe they did, but it's not clear in the instructions. So there's nothing in the product packaging to help uh, a user decide if that's green or blue according to the definition of the manufacturer. So uh, I would call that an inconclusive result, and we may never know because the bottle of um, peanut butter is going to go back to Costco. Anyway, this is Dr. Falcon. If you found this segment interesting, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, visit my blog, which is available at journal.drfalcon.com. Stay safe and don't eat contaminated peanut butter.